for three years, you are going to have your child in a crib, and there are a lot of rules that we need to cover today. So I'm gonna shock and awe you because yes, I said three years old in the crib. Let's get into all the do's and don'ts when it comes to your child's crib. Whenever I tell parents that your child will be in the crib until as close to three years old as possible, I definitely get shock and awe. And that's not because I'm really good at what I teach, it's because that doesn't seem normal, Becca. I know friends and I have people that I know who have an 18 month old in an open bed. Well, good for them, but maybe not for you. You see here at Little Z Sleep, I teach families how to make sleep a thing. And I am telling you, the longer we can have them in the crib, the better. And I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself. I am in this video going to walk you through my do's and don'ts when it comes to the crib. Hello, I'm Becca Campbell, your pediatric sleep consultant. Welcome to the Little Z Sleep YouTube channel. We are so glad you're here. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything, especially how spicy I get when it comes to topics on sleep. When it comes to your child's crib space, there are a lot of things we need to make sure we do and we don't do. The very first thing that I need you to please do is keep your child in the crib until as close to three years old as possible. Let me explain. You see, the crib has four sides wonderful sides that keep your child contained. And this is good because until three years old, children really don't understand boundaries or rules and expectations. And so when you take a toddler and you invite them to an open bed, like a twin bed or a full bed, and you say, here, two-year-old, go into this bed they do not understand the invisible boundaries that they have. All they can see is that the walls are down so I can escape. Now, yes, there are some toddlers who do wonderful in an open bed before three years old. And if that is you or you know someone who has that situation, great. But if you have a toddler who is struggling, they are not sleeping all night long because they're in an open bed, then here's your thing you're gonna put them back in a crib, all right? You're going to put your toddler who is not yet three years old back into a crib. Over the years, when I have coached parents on this exact topic, I always have met with the same remark. But Becca, isn't that punishing them? I just got them this wonderful, great bed for Christmas. Now you're telling me I have to tell them they gotta go back to their crib? And my answer is, yep. And here's why. First of all, your child is young. They really don't understand that their bed is not the right place for them, but what they do understand and what they will feel is how much better they're going to sleep in their crib because they will sleep all night long and they feel more secure because they feel and they sense the boundaries. Boundaries are good. Your toddler needs them. So avoid sleep woes and avoid a toddler who is roaming the house at night by keeping them in their crib until they are as close to three years old as possible. The next do with your crib is I need you to lower the mattress. Do lower the mattress before the baby masters the next skill. I have a friend, Holly Choi of Safe Beginnings, and she is notorious for saying that your baby, you think, oh, they don't know how to roll. They don't know how to crawl. They don't know how to stand, but the moment you think that is the moment they do it. And so I need you to go ahead, before they even get to those milestones, just start lowering that mattress. When you have your crib mattress lowered, then any idea of what would happen if I woke up and my baby is holding onto the edge and could fall over, that's all gone because you know that the baby is safe and secure. So yes, your crib has different levels that you can raise and lower the mattress. And I am an advocate for lowering lowering the mattress before you even think it's possible that they could be moving around. So make sure you are analyzing your baby, make sure you're staying on top of when we should be lowering that, and just go ahead and do it now. If you have a newborn, why not go ahead and lower the mattress? <laughs> it's not gonna hurt anybody. But making sure you're keeping up with the crib mattress level is really important. And you would think I would know this, but <laughs> I will never forget the morning. 
that I woke up and I went to go get Hattie, my youngest, and she was about six months old at the time and she hadn't started sitting up just yet by herself. And I walk in there and there she was. The mattress was all the way on the highest level and there she was sitting, holding on to the side of the crib, to the top of it. So please don't do that. That's a little bit scary. And so now that I realize like, duh, I should have lowered the mattress. I'm here to be your advocate and tell you lower the mattress now. Do keep your baby's crib in the farthest place away from your bed if you are room sharing. So if you are a parent who has decided to share the room or you don't have any other space in your house and so your baby's crib is in your room, do keep their crib away from your side of the bed. However your room is configured, if you can place that crib on the farthest corner away from you, this is going to help everyone sleep better. One of the biggest things that I ask parents to do is to have some space and have some you time when it comes to you've put your baby down and now you can have that time and that space that you need to feel at your best so you can be a parent again the next day. And when you're going to sleep and your baby's head and their baby's crib is right beside yours, you're not getting enough sleep and they're gonna be woken up because they hear you and vice versa. So. Do move the crib away from your side of the bed. A lot of the times parents just need me to tell them that, that it's okay. You're still a wonderful parent if your baby's crib is not right beside your head. Let's move it across the room so everybody has a better night of sleep. Don't keep any decorative pillows, blankets, or stuffed animals in your baby's crib. I know it looks not that Pinterest perfect pretty when it's just the crib. Becca, I bought this pretty pom-pom pillow. I have this beautiful quilt that Nana knitted for me. I know, I get that you have these things that are so pretty, but here's the thing. Until your child is 12 months old, they don't need anything in their crib. In fact, that's unsafe for them to have pillows, blankets, or stuffed animals. At 12 months old, then they can have a lovey or a blanket. At two years old, they could have a pillow. So we really need to avoid having stuff inside the crib. Now, I see you because I know you. When we had our first daughter, I had stuffed animals that we received, a little monkey and a little lammy. She's seven now, she still sleeps with them. But I just kept them in the crib when she was a newborn because I was like, well, she's a newborn, she can't roll around and reach them. But again, going back to our point earlier, your baby will likely do things before you think they will do them. It's much better to just be safe. So go ahead when you have your child going to sleep in their crib, if they are under 12 months old, just take everything out of that crib. Nothing needs to be in the crib when they are sleeping. Now, when it comes to toddlers in the crib, because remember, we're gonna keep them there as close to three years old as we can. When it comes to toddlers in the crib, yes, they can have a pillow. Yes, they can have a blanket. Yes, they can have stuffed animals. But don't invite a zoo into your child's crib. I've seen this happen firsthand. When there gets to be seven to 10 stuffed animals in the crib, it's now a distraction. It's not a safe and peaceful place to sleep. So invite your toddler to choose one or two buddies that they can take into the crib and the rest of them can go sleep on the floor or in a little basket somewhere else in the room. Don't use crib tents. The mosquito netting, the crib tents, those are all extremely dangerous. A child can easily grab them and pull onto them and can fall on them. These have caused many strangulations and many deaths, and I do not advocate for those. You've seen me talk about my love for the slumber pod, which is completely different. It is not a crib tent that attaches to the crib itself. It goes outside of it, and it is not a structure that can fall on top of your child. So no crib tent no netting and nothing hanging around the crib that attaches to it at all. Don't keep any wires, cords, baskets, distractions within three feet of your child's crib. I have often been into families' homes and see that the monitor was just perched on top of the crib frame. Let's go ahead and mount that thing, okay? Because we don't want your child to be pulling on the wires. This means that monitors, sound machines, anything that is plugged in 
in your child's room should definitely not be within arm's reach that they can grab a wire. I also wanna make sure that there are no baskets of books or bookshelves or baskets of blankets or stuffed animals that a sneaky young toddler could just pull into their bed during nap time or during bedtime. So check out your child's radius of their crib and make sure that it is three feet clear around their crib so that nothing can come in once you put them in and walk out the room. I would love to know in the comments below which one of these surprised you or shocked you the most. And hey, you may disagree with me and that is completely okay because the beauty of parenting is that we get to make the decisions that we believe are best for our family. But you can count on me being here every week for you to help you keep sleep a thing. I hope that you've subscribed to this channel already so you'll never miss a video. Sweet dreams. See you next time.